the ninth station. Jesus falls the third time. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. Jesus falls again. He falls again and again. He falls this third time. And this is important for us as his disciples. It's important for us as believers. Because we often find ourselves in that same difficulty of falling again and again. And whether it's something that uh, we're struggling with, with regards to our weakness, with regards to our limitation, if it's a particular temptation that we seem to, to struggle with and that becomes a challenge to us, if it's a particular sin that we just find difficult to shake, whatever it might be, when we get stuck in this pattern of, of falling again and again, it's so easy for us to get discouraged. It's so easy for us to get stuck. It's so easy for us to start buying into the lie of, well, just becoming indifferent, thinking that we'll never get over this. We'll never share in the victory that Christ has won. That for some reason, it's not for us. Because obviously if it were, we wouldn't be continually falling. And yet Christ was most certainly one who was going to participate in the victory of the resurrection. He was most certainly the one who was going to participate in the glory of God the Father. And yet even that one, the very Son of God, fell again and again. He too repeatedly fell. And yet he continually got back up. He continually had hope. He himself was not discouraged on the way knowing that there would be nothing that would keep him from the love of God, his Father. And that same thing is true for us. Nothing can get between us and the love of our Father in heaven. Nothing can hold us down. Because nothing is more powerful than the power of God's love, than the power of his infinite mercy. We shouldn't allow ourselves to be discouraged. We have every reason to hope. We have every reason to be encouraged and to, to live in courage. And yet we live in a world that uh, doesn't look to hope. It always looks to the self. And see, that's so susceptible to, to discouragement, to being stuck. If the only person we look to in times of our struggle, the only person we look to in the times of our need is ourselves, we will get stuck in that loop of, not being able to break out. And we will inevitably bring ourselves to that point of not being able to move forward. And so Christ would want us to not be discouraged, to not just rely upon ourselves and to look only uh, to ourselves, but to look to God and hope. And that can be the source of our, our courage. That can be the source of, of our faith. That can be the source and the, and the power that keeps us motivated to, to get back up, to try again, and to keep going. And see, hope is not just a future thing. It's not just that we have the hope that, yeah, one day we will overcome these difficulties. One day we will no longer fall. It is that. It's absolutely that. And we should never lose sight of that. We should never lose sight of the fact that our hope is for us to be made saints, to be made holy, and to be in heaven. That is our true hope. That is where our anchor is in that future, in the future that God has, well, chosen for us, that future that God has created us for, that future that God, uh, by sending his Son, redeemed us for. But see, hope is not just about the future. It's also about right now. Because part of discouragement is it tells us that there is no way forward, that there is no way from here, that this is just inevitable, and that even if we get back up, we're going to be right back in that same place. But see, there's nothing inevitable. There's nothing inevitable about the here and the now. We have a choice. 
we have a choice to see things differently, to relate to them differently, to bear God's life, or to just rely upon ourselves. Each day, whether the sun is out or not, we have a choice to either be thankful for it, we have a choice to receive it as a gift, or we can ignore those things. And it's not inevitable that we're just going to get stuck into a rut and to the way things have always been. We actually can live in a hopefulness for the now, a hopefulness for today, that this day we will experience and see and discover things that maybe we didn't quite see or experience the day before. There's something that God is actually doing for us now. And that should give us great encouragement. It should give us courage to, to keep going. If God didn't have something for us right now, if God didn't have something for us today, he wouldn't have created it. He wouldn't have given it to us. But see, he, he has. Which tells me that he has something for us in the here and in the now. He has something new to lead us to experience him in a new and wonderful way. Christ, he fell again, and he fell again. But he was never discouraged. Let us also not live in discouragement. Let us live in hopefulness. Let us have courage and follow Christ into the glory that God desires for us. As we consider now how Jesus fell for the third time, let us consider how he was extremely weak and that the cruelty of his executioners was becoming excessive. They tried to hasten his steps, though he hardly had strength to move. Let us pray. My outraged Jesus, by the weakness you suffered in going to Calvary, give me enough strength to overcome all human respect and all my evil passions, which have led me to despise your friendship. I love you, Jesus, my love, with all my heart. I am sorry for ever having offended you. Never permit me to offend you again. Grant that I may love you always, and then do with me as you will. Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.